Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget, web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at K98FM.com. In these uncertain economic times, you've got to do whatever you can to save money. One of our biggest expenses can be our cars, especially when unexpected repair bills hit. Not anymore. If you own a vehicle with less than 130,000 miles, is less than 12 years old, has a warranty about to expire, or even no warranty at all, you could stop paying for car repairs. Roadside assistance, towing, and rental coverage are all included. Don't wait for the next repair. Make one free call right now to see if you qualify. If your vehicle vehicle is less than 12 years old, has less than 130,000 miles, even if it's out of warranty, paying for car repairs can become a thing of the past. Call us right now and get your car protected before your next repair bill hits. Get protection and no more repair bills. Call 800-696-1030. Again, 800-696-1030. That's 800-696-1030. 800-696-1030. Joe had huge problems with the IRS. I knew it was coming. I hadn't filed taxes since 1990. All the IRS letters coming in added up to a nightmare. It got up to like $68,000. My heart started beating fast. It's like, there's no way, man. I mean, I ain't going to be able to do this. Then they stopped his paycheck. So that's when I started making phone calls and found U.S. Tax Shield. U.S. Tax Shield went to work immediately. They just took the bull by the horns. What blew my mind is he called the IRS right then and there. So why is U.S. Tax Tax Shield A plus rated with the Better Business Bureau? Joe knows. They saved me a ridiculous amount of money. If you owe more than ten thousand dollars to the IRS or state, choose the company Joe chose. U.S. Tax Shield. It was the best decision I made. U.S. Tax Shield is the way to go. Life is good. Thank you, Lord. <laughs> Call eight hundred four seven one thirty two eighty seven. U.S. Tax Shield. Boo raw. Yes. <laughs> 800-471-3287 Game on where progressives fear us and rhinos tremble Welcome to the political jungle I'm JD This is Stacy No one is safe No one is spared Lock up the children And the old folk Welcome to the world of Libiservative Conservatarians. So thank you for having me at your uh, town hall here, Mr. Matthews. What was that you wanted me to talk about? Women in abortion? It's like I tell Edith all the time. Get me a beer, huh, dingbat, and keep yourself barefoot and pregnant and don't leave the house. Thursday night, March 31st, 2016, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. J.D. and Stacy, game on. Part of that conservative commandos radio network on that K98 talk. MSNBC evidently does porn now, kids, because last night the emperor had no clothes, baby. Welcome back to all of our political geeks, freaks, and back alley sneaks. Everybody within the sound of my voice right now, you know what to do. Get over to K98talk.org, get in that chat room, say hello to Stacey, say hello to the drunkest, Oive Schmier from the pictures they're sending us. One day we're going to do a coffee table book and nobody will want to put the coffee on it. Nakedest radio listening, political audience in the business. J.D. and Stacey, baby, your radio acid trip, breaking down the levees of your mind. Good evening. Good evening. Woo, we're live now, huh, baby? It would appear so. <laughs> Jolted me out of my chair with that. Me too. What do you think the audience is doing? They're naked and they're falling out of their chairs. Uh, <laughs> I think we Tonight. only have one confirmed nudist in the group. T- uh, Ron. Yeah. Ron. Tonight, baby, little Donnie walking blind through a minefield. Coulter, Tantaros, and Nolte try putting their clothes back on and jumping out that back window, baby. Delegate bondage, the BDSM. 
the PDSM <sighs> outside strategy. Nonsense of the world and more. Remember, guys, we're not just here live Thursday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. For Game On, part of that Conservative Commandos Radio Network on that K98 Talk, we do it again this coming Sunday morning, 11 a.m. Shift gears. No, it's not Bloody Mary's and broadsheets, damn it. It's Game On. But we're still <laughs> here in your mainstream media hangover. We're live again Tuesday nights, 9 p.m. Eastern Standard here in that K98 Talk. Friday, 5 p.m. Drive Time. We got a show at a little media market called Philadelphia. Oh, we also serve Southern Jersey, Northern Delaware. Big whoop, won't fight about it. And as a matter of fact, we're that lead into that Yahoo Sports on that WNWNWN, JC, 1360 AM. And, kids, after the show, not during it, you're going to stick around for the boss, that Ricky Ticky Tommy Rick Robinson, Rap America Off the Rails, Monday through Friday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on the Spark Radio Network on that K98 Talk. And after that, Hoopals, when you want to get that J.D. and Stacey and K98 Talk goodness, you get over to Spreaker.com, hashtag J.D. and Stacey, J-D-A-N-D-S-T-A-C-E-Y. Find out a catalog of everything we've been doing here with that Ricky Ticky Tommy Rick Robinson and that K98 Talk. Good evening, darling. Good evening. We have a problem. What's that? It appears that none of these folks that have just started voting for the first time have ever taken civics or math. Uh, you know, you want to know something? <laughs> so, so, long, so long as what you just said, you you think you think that song blasted you out of your chair when you went? We had a problem. I'm here going. What are we? Your heart gonna stopped be able just a hear? little bit. Didn't it? Good yeah. Lord. Well, hold on a don't second. Don't do that to the producer. Hold just on don't. A I gotta hit the little audio man and the radio man in the boat. Hold on a second. All right, there you are. Now you're not crackling in my in in, in my ears heads here in those northeastern studios. So <laughs> it's not a see. We problem. did have a problem. I didn't even know it. It's not a problem. It, you you <laughs> want to know what? Everybody everybody can blow it out their 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 keister because this is what you get every election cycle up until now. Hey, it's a damn shame. We have participation like forty percent voted. You know what? It's not a democracy until a hundred percent vote. All right. You want to know something? That's why the sixty percent of these idiots haven't been voting for the last 20 years. Now, now, now we got what we wanted. Okay, I'm coming to vote, Bob. And hey, this Trump guy sounds like he's got, he's got something. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And they're stealing it from him, Bob. They're going to steal oh, it. Update on Trump's campaign manager. Apparently his lawyer didn't tell him not to tweet. Radio just for stoners. You got a cop, a cop's theme song in a law and order. <laughs> there you go. We, we we just run. We we just won every college kid in America with that. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> okay, so for those of you <laughs> who have been following the uh, the 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 primary. <laughs> Oh, wait, no, I forgot. Stacy retired that for the dumpster fire, right? Right. I'm telling you, that... that it that, could that. be a dumpster fire at a circus, though. Oh, my good Lord. So the front <laughs> runner, the, 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 the nominal front runner, and tonight, basically, what we're going to do is, is we're going to be talking about little Donny, little Donny with little doll hands, with little doll hands. You know, Stacey and I went over a, a article on Tuesday night that was written by uh, Eileen Tajilski. And Eileen Tajilski was the Trump campaign's uh, a PAC. What was she? She was the comms director, correct? She was the PAC comms director, yes. So, you know, her job was basically to craft the message of the Donald Trump campaign. And she goes into all of this of how there really is no there there. Donald Trump is basically the dog that caught the car. He didn't want to win. He wasn't looking to win. But now here he and is. And I swear to God, for the last three days, he's trying really hard not to. Uh, you know, you're like the fifth person <laughs> that said that yeah. to me today. Uh-huh. And and what you have is, is, is you have this big fission in, in the Republican Party. You know, it, it, there's the never Trump crowd. There's 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 the Trumpkins. There's, you know, the, the Rubio supporters who, who still can't get over it and haven't come home to Ted Cruz. But basically what this is all about is math. And right now, the math gets very complicated for any one of these nominees, as, as, as potential nominees, as we've been saying, is to get to that 1237 number. So what you have here, as Stacey and I have been saying, Jay Koss and Selena Zito have been writing exceedingly well on, is a populist campaign. So, Stacey, in a populist campaign, you're playing off the emotions and you're really getting people to grab their, their – the pitchfork and torch business in conservative yeah. media – has mm-hmm. been has been pretty good, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah, no, I, and you know, 
some of our conservative pundits have been handing people pitchfork, pitchforks and pyres for years. So, you know. <laughs> And you also have the gasoline set. You have the Ann Coulters mm-hmm. of the world, the Andrea Tenteros, the detestable Milo John, Yannopoulos. The, 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 the detestable John Nolte over at, over at Trump Pot. And that's right. You're all bought and paid for. Hold on a second. I'm having oh, they a- proved that today. Oh, my God. We're having all sorts of board issues here. Hold on one second while I hit the reset here. All right, there we go. Now, now everything's not, not, not crackling and crinkling. So what you have in the populist campaign is you had the 436,937 and a half hoopals on our side who ran for president, two of which came back Trump and have already been emasculated. That is Dr. Ben Carson and Chris Christie. They look like pod people. Pod people? They, they, would, they would think Oh, my God. Not only did Trump absolutely just completely jump the shark with Chris Matthews last night, then Carson comes out with the worst surrogate response I've ever seen. Oh no 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 no! The worst the, 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 wor- the worst response the worst response was Herman Cain, right? So, uh, all right. Be- before Stacy and I get ahead of get ahead of ourselves, there was a town hall held on MSNBC last night. And for anybody who's the casual political observer, everybody knows that by 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Chris Matthews is about a bottle and a half of vodka or scotch in. Everybody knows he worked for the Carter campaign, the Carter administration. Everybody knows he's a damn chill in the mainstream media. So it really shouldn't be surprised that a drunk Chris Matthews at a town hall would try to trip up a Republican candidate. Now. If you know what you're doing and you're not just walking around naked in the old folks home going, where's the bingo game? Which is basically what happened to Trump on the town hall last night. When you heard a young woman in the audience ask about pro-life to a Republican candidate, it should get your ears up. Well, Stacey, you and I were speaking about how ridiculous this exchange was between Matthews and Trump and about how short he got caught on it, correct? It was about five minutes and 14 seconds in total. All right, I have it here, and, it and I, couldn't, probably... I couldn't decide where to cut it because I think the audience needs to hear so much of the fumbling through this. So let's set it up. This is Matthews, uh, uh, Chris Matthews and, and, and Trump at the MSNBC town hall last night. Hello. Hello. I'm Tanya Neamey, and I have a question on what is your stance on women's rights and their right to choose in their own reproductive health? Okay. Well, look, I mean, I'm, as you know, I'm pro-life, right? I think you know that. Um, And uh, with exceptions, with the three exceptions. What should the law be on abortion? Well, I, I, I... Let's freeze it there, Stacey. Let's break this down. Did you want want to take it from, you know, the three exceptions? um, Because he hasn't thought this through. And, And then what kind of setup question is and what the answer should be when a drunk Chris Matthews goes, well, what is the, what should the law be on abortion? Well, first of all, um, let's just say the three exceptions. I don't even think he knows what they are. Um, rape, incest, and life of the mother is usually what. No, but what you're they're, absolutely right. They're, he has no clue. They're what articulated the hell they are. as. Right. Um, but you got to remember, Trump has been pro-life for about five minutes. I think when he got too old to screw around too much and didn't have to worry about getting things taken care of, he maybe had a little bit of a conversion. But the first other point I would like to make is we have a good friend of the show named Michael Loftus and he has an entire segment in a Michael Topia about how there in Michael Topia there are no candidates who answer hypothetical questions that is the most hypothetical question that Chris Matthews asked what should the law be on abortion not this (laughs) this goes back this as if a president writes laws that's not how any of this works this (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> I, that's just that's not how any of this works. works that's not how any of this works <laughs> god i i just feel Hello. like i need to say that I'm 40 tiny. times a day all right so let's let's pick this up here as, as matthews asked him about what should the law on abortion be okay well look i mean i'm as you know i'm pro-life right i think you know that um and uh I, with exceptions, with the three exceptions. So what should the law be on abortion? Well, I, I, I have been pro-life. I know. What should I've the law? I know your principle. That's a good value. But well, you know, does he think the big three exceptions are Ford, GM, and Chrysler? I have no idea. 
But you, what do you law. think the law should be on abortion? And, well, and I am frankly, pro-life, uh, and I will judges, be the emperor. And you, I mean, you're going to have a very big election coming up for that reason, because you have judges where it's a real tipping point. And with the loss of Scalia, who was you know, a very strong conservative, this presidential election is going to be very important, because when you say, what's the law? Nobody knows what the law is going to be. It depends on who gets elected, because somebody's going to appoint conservative judges. I want you to think about that for a second. The man just said nobody knows what the law is going to be until they get elected. Um, I don't know if he has enough time between now and November to get this, but the laws stay the same unless they <laughs> change by the legislative branch. So, little Donnie, little Donnie, listen, Trump, get your hand on your schmeckle and you rear up to the radio. It's learning time, learning time. Listen, the Donnie speaking, little Donnie speaking, little Donnie. And somebody's going to appoint liberal judges depending on who wins. I've so, never understood the pro-life position. Well, I never understood it because I understand the principle. Understand. It's human life as people see it. Well, what it crime? What, well, what crime is it? Well, it's human life. No, well, should the woman be punished for having an abortion? Uh, look, uh, this is not something you can dodge. It's a, if no, you no, say it's abortion not, it's is not, a crime or abortion is murder, you have to deal with it under the law. Should abortion be punished? Well, people in certain parts of the Republican Party and conservative Republicans would say yes, they should be punished. How about you? Uh, I would say that it's a very serious problem, and it's a problem that we have to decide on. Uh, it's, it's very hard. But you're I mean, for are banning you it. Say, well, wait, are you going to say put them in jail? Are you, is that well, the no, but I'm asking you, about? because you say you want to ban it. I, I am pro-life, yes. What is ban, how do you ban abortion? How do you actually do it? Well, you know, you'll go back to a, a position like they had, where people will perhaps go to oh my God, illegal you have places, to yeah. but you have to ban it. I'm... No, people have to hear. People no, have I, to I've hear. already listened. We're going to well, go the, back to where they use coat hangers and uh, women hold, die. Hold, hold, hold Yay. Oh, all right. Well, let, I, okay. I, I can't. So let's play, let, <laughs> like, let's play a smorgasbord of this answer. Let's fast forward two minutes in and see if it makes any more sense. Meaning you want to ban it. The Catholic Church is probably. No, let's not talk about my. The Catholic Church, David. It's had other okay. Chris Matthews. I, okay, I'm so not only, not yet. only, not only, okay, <laughs> does he not understand that the president doesn't write the law. He thinks the law changes every time the Supreme Court is reconfigured. That's Maybe they write works. the law. And That's now he's thinking that works. somebody's religious views should govern the law. I, I, oh, God. <laughs> that was the answer of a man who does not understand the office that he's running for. And that is the answer of a man who has not thought through <laughs> these positions. But I want you to think at all. But I want you to think about this. Well, but if what Donald he did, Trump, what he if, did, was a caricature. Caricature, JD. He's not a conservative. He's been a liberal most of his life. So when he gets asked that question, he backs up from it, looks at it through a liberal lens of what he thinks a conservative would say, and he says it because he has no clue how we actually think. But you have to. What you have to. What you have to remember is he's asked that question there and caught on the spot. He could not hearken back to one private conversation he had with a friend, a colleague, a family member about this because he has an never, advisor. He, he doesn't listen. He is. Is it? I year. know. I am. As when it comes to. Foreign policy, myself, meet the press, and my Schmeckle are the best advisors on the planet. And I have and, a really big brain. And that's why, that's why, that's why I get to go through my wife's door, and we will build a wall so there will be no more beautiful Mexicans that go through my wife's door. Yes, we all know this. We all, we all know this. So, Trumpkins, I want you to listen up. I want you to listen up, and I want you to pay attention, okay? He was not just sunk and landmined by Walter Winchell or, 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 or the great and nimble Bill Clinton in a debate. He was stumbled on an abortion setup question by a sodded up doddering Chris Matthews. Chris, get the thrill up his leg, Matthews, on at the town uh -huh. hall. And if you think the audio is unbearable, go back. I'm telling you, he is like he looks like an old man in the home in his slippers with the white coat on with his, oh, ass his hanging feet out. red. He wasn't even orange. No, with like the bowl of porridge. Where, where, what time is bingo? What time is bingo? I used to have a cat named Bingo. I like to play with my shoes. I, I, I mean, seriously. I, I mean, you, if, if, you, if you shut the audio off and look at his face, it really, really could be that bad. But I will tell you the delicious, the delicious cherry to the top of this idiocy. And Stacy and I were saying it earlier today. It's not that 
the land of the land of Lincoln, the party of Lincoln doesn't deserve for what it's been built up to within the last 10 or 15 years to be torn apart. The question is, by whom? And doesn't it matter that somebody cares what rises out of those ashes? So we have 30 seconds left here. Let's talk about Ann Coulter and Tanteros and John Nolte's sad face. Oh, oh John God. Nolte's sad face. You know, they all kind of said, Ann Coulter put it best when she was talking to Milo Yanopoulos. I think that's how you say his last name. Who um, our candidate is mental. He's like a 16-year-old. You have to bail out of jail. You know, I'm glad he brought some of these discussions to the forefront in immigration and, you know, da-da-da-da-da. I just think we could be a teensy less bit lowbrow. The whole candid- the whole campaign has been lowbrow. It's disgusting. Well, listen, Gingrich, the- Gingrich saying that, you know, he has to rethink his underlying patterns. This has been his underlying pattern since July, Newt. Thanks for letting us know. And but my keep- favorite line, Jim Garrity, when this is all over, people like Ann and, and Newt, we're not just going to hug it out. We're not going to forget this. And in making sure in the tradition of keeping it lowbrow, J.D. and Stacey, from now on, whenever Milo or Andrea Tinteros are mentioned, this is going to be their music. You hear that, Tinteros? I don't care how big your cans are. You're a shill. You're an awful, 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 awful shill. But coming back on the other side, baby. Trumpkins, listen up. Hand up your schmeckle. ear up to the radio. Lil Donnie, Lil Donnie meeting with the RNC and the GOP establishment in a closed-door meeting with just his campaign. Unbound delegates trying to find themselves some bondage and so much more. J.D. and Stacey, game on. The show's so big, Diamond Dave takes us out to break. Unless it doesn't work. One break coming. This is Slickery Trigger for Rebel Road Tactical. With proper care and feeding, your pistol will be ready when you need it. There to save your life. Shouldn't your gear be that good? Whether you need a holster for comfortable, everyday carry, or a tough-as-nails holster for your next training course, Rebel Road Tactical has what you need. Check us out on the web at rebelroadtactical.com. If you like your health care plan, you'll be able to keep your health care plan. This is the most transparent administration in history. Not even a smidgen of corruption. Fact is, we had four dead Americans. What difference at this point does it make? If you've got a business, you didn't build that. The feeling most people get when they hear a Barack Obama speech, my, I felt this thrill going up my leg. I mean, well, I don't have that too often. Steady. It's time to hear the truth about America's biggest challenges. Ricky Robinson, host of America Off the Rails, will tackle the important issues facing America today as he tries to keep America from coming off the track. Get ready to hear the truth every Monday through Friday starting at 7 p.m. Eastern, 6 Central, here on K98talk.com and the Spark Radio Network. Are you conservative in a world of liberal? Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. Well, you're not alone. Hey, I'm Daniel Stafford, host of The Stafford Voice, and I'd like to invite you to tune in each Monday, 10 p.m. Eastern, where I'll break down the events of the week, and together we'll learn about how they affect you. So sit back and get ready for the good, the bad, and the ugly of talk radio right here on K98 Talk. From the Vikings of Norway to my home down south to Washington, D.C., I've been around. I've seen it all, and I've come out on top. You better beware, for all you know, the bell tolls for you. Enter the bell tower or watch your step. 8 p.m. Thursdays, K98 Talk. J. 
Katie and Stacey back here with Game On, part of that Conservative Commandos Radio Network here in that K98 Talk. I hope everybody topped off their drink, tightened up their sting, got whatever help make them think, because everybody right now is getting over to K98Talk.org. You're getting in that chat room, saying hello to Stacey, joining the conversation, saying hello to the smallest, oy vey shmir nakedest, listening political radio audience in the business. Remember, guys, you're going to stick around after the show, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time here on K98 Talk. You stick around for the boss, that Ricky Ticky Tavi Rick Robinson. Friday, 5 p.m. drive time, NJC, Big Whoop, Philadelphia, Spreaker.com, hashtag JD and Stacy, J D A N D S T A C E Y. Find a catalog of everything we've been doing here with that Ricky Ticky Tommy Rick Robinson. Soon to go up CPAC interviews and just go find all the fun stuff that we're doing over there. Wah, 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 like the penguin. Wah, wah, wah. I'm the penguin from Batman. Wah, wah, wah. Are you muted? Were you sneezing? No. No. No, just, a, just, just in a trance. I was just, I was just listening. <laughs> <laughs> listening to my, my, uh, my, my, my mini stroke. Yeah, something like that. Dad, listen to the show. Dad, we're on the radio. Oh, we're here at that time. Oh my God, the boss is on. Dad, get over the speaker. <laughs> <laughs> Dear Lord. I think we just caught our next promo. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> that doesn't work for you. Come on. Okay, Come terrific. Come on. So now we're coming to the portion of the show that has to do with math and rules. Oh, and it's I'm almost out. like nope, everybody nope, who's voting nope. for Trump played in that soccer league that doesn't keep score, so they didn't actually have to learn the rules of the game. Because the rules of the game in soccer aren't always fair either. You're going to lose the audience. You're speaking about soccer. I think the best I way, know, but this, I, I you the played way, sports as a kid. Not all the rules are the, fair. The, the, the best way to explain the GOP convention and delegate process, Andrew Dice Clay, got it perfect. I'm over here now. These you are see, delegates. That's a professional. You didn't even see what I just did, did you, honey? I'm over here now. I was over there. Now I'm over here. That's a professional. You know, another guy comes up here, he gets all <laughs> drops the mic, trips over his, not me. I'm over there, and now I came over here, but then I backed up, now I'm over here. You see what I'm saying? And for Bika, who was asking in the chat room, no, that was soccer and meth. Um, but the reason it was... <laughs> all right, wait a minute, wait a minute. Bika! The reason... The reason that the first segment was so important is because of where we are in the campaign. And right now, it's all about 1237 because the rules are very straightforward. We've been gone over them on the last few shows. And, and, and what is 1237? 1237 is the number of delegates that a nominee has got to have coming into the Republican National Convention to win the nominee at the nomination process in the primary process. It's, it's much simpler than that. It's a simple majority, 50 percent plus one. <laughs> exactly. So what you have is you now have with Kasich, Cruz, and Trump in the race, you have a loan. Trump is all about momentum. Because I want you to think about, I, I want you to play this out in your head. If, by the last delegate count, Trump has 736 of the required 1237. Cruz has 436. Rubio is still ahead of Kasich. Oh, oh, oh man. I know. I know you love that. Oh, I love this. Casing. <laughs> He's another confused uh, Alzheimer's patient. So Rubio's got 171. Kasich has 143. This is in the pursuit of 1237. <laughs> the next primary on the Republican side is April 5th, and then there's a two-week lull again until New York on the 19th. Wisconsin has 42 delegates. And I think why the first segment of the show was so important is because it showed what each candidate is doing in the downtime and the lull. Trump needs to have two things. He needs to have momentum and he needs to have a straw man to attack. He hasn't had momentum and is now on defensive from what we played in the first segment for almost the entire time of the campaign. Oh, plus his campaign stuff. manager, plus, yeah. Now, Trump's at the point where if you look at his unfavorables today, in order for him, if he was the nominee, to win, he would have to win 70 or 80 percent. Hey, where are the white women at? Of the white male vote in this country. And that's that's in both parties. So eighty five percent of Hispanics have an unfavorable view. Seventy four percent of women. It's unreal. I'm sorry, I had to do a Hispanic vote. Um, I know. So what you had today 
is you have Trump? I mean, that sounds like, well, he's at 736. Cruz has got 463. If Ted Cruz takes Wisconsin, the math for Donald Trump becomes almost impossible to arrive at the convention with the necessary 1237, which means it's going to go to ballot. Stacey's got well, great, and great. What? If he loses South Carolina because of his big mouth. Well, we're going to get to that. This is this is all this. Is, we, we can't we can't speak about everything in the first two minutes. Sorry. Um, so you have Wisconsin, which is going to play big because if Cruz wins that and the last two polls that come out have him up by 10 points. Now, I want you all to think about this. Donald Trump, we all know how little Donnie, little Donnie has conducted himself throughout this entire campaign. I think you have the personality of Donald Trump down fine. Donald Trump, less than 48 hours ago, I will be in Wisconsin for the entire week, all the way up to the election on Tuesday in eight days, and I will not leave the ground. Well, he left the ground today for an emergency Trump campaign only meeting with who? The terrible GOP. You know, Rance Priebus, who said, hey, Greta, you know, I never struck colored man until I saw Barack Obama from Wisconsin. And I think that this polling and what's going on in Wisconsin has him rattled. So doesn't it? Seem- oh, my God. His disastrous interviews with conservative talk show radio hosts have him ra- why razzled. Don't you, why don't you pick up on what would worry the Trump campaign to precipitate a meeting with the RNC? It's about the fact that this man and his campaign had no idea that there is a second tier game that's run in a presidential primary, correct? And that's the none game. at all. And here's the thing Trump surrounded himself with people who don't have a Corey Lewandowski had never run a campaign, not at that level. Um, you know, his press secretary, the person who's supposed to manage the press pool, used to be a secretary for the Trump organization who used to decide which member of the Trump family somebody wanted to talk to. You know, his surrogates are doing an awful job when they get on the, you know, the radio, the television, whatever. And they, what they didn't understand is how this process actually Works so as we've said, twelve thirty-seven, simple majority. What you got to get? The RNC put out a memo today that basically said, as far as the RNC is concerned, all of the delegates coming into the convention are unbound. Apparently, there was some confusion because of the nineteen seventy-six. 1976, the GOP instituted the justice rule, which bound all delegates to the outcome of their state primaries because Gerald Ford got a hold of some people and was a little bit scared that Ronald Reagan was going to take him out as a sitting president. That was rescinded in 1980 when not all delegations, specifically that of Pennsylvania, voted along with their states in the first round. And that's how we got Ronald Reagan as our nominee in 1980. Now, state rules differ, okay? I can tell you going into the convention, North Dakota, Colorado, and Pennsylvania, all of those delegates are unbound. Pennsylvania has always been that way, and Colorado and North Dakota are not holding primaries of any kind. So they're selecting their delegates, and they're going to send them to the convention. So if, if folks don't have a ground game in Pennsylvania, Colorado, and North Dakota... Those delegates are completely up for grabs. Right. Slow down. But it's the, the ones in Louisiana as well that Cruz was able to pick off. Well, the ones that Cruz was able to pick off in Louisiana haven't been officially allocated to him yet. But because they were proportionally allocated to Marco Rubio, they're up for grabs. But the best part about it is as much as we always say that our guys don't know how to politic. Ted Cruz has planted a couple of uh, oh, derka, derka, derka. type uh, time bombs within the Trump delegates, hasn't he? Oh, yes, he has. And he's <laughs> doing it all over here in the state of Georgia. Coweta County, which went heavily for Trump. Almost all the delegates that have been selected over there are Cruz. Well, you know, you, did you hear the, the have, meeting have... in my own county took place. And a lot of people who maybe didn't show up and may have been thought to have been Trump supporters got bumped off getting sent to the district nomination. And other people are being sent in their place. Now, and that's all something that the local party has control over. So if people want to complain, if they're not going to their local party event and being a part of this process, that's their problem. They don't well, understand how this works. Again, the point that I was making is that there were that there were they were Trump they were Cruz people who were mm-hmm. actually able to get themselves elected 
as Trump delegates, because again, this goes back to the fact that the Trump campaign never expected to get this far. This is completely the dog that caught the car. So, and and here's the best part about 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 the political world is that Trump ha- has fu money. I, I mean, he 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 could buy a midget and put it in a spaceship with a monkey and and do whatever he wants. However. Inside the political world, there are not that many people with the expertise to, for a campaign that is way behind the clock, spin a candidate up and cover all of the delegate laws and math and make those relationships in all 50 states. And the problem, Trumpkins, listen up, listen up, Trumpkins, here on the radio, hand up the schmeckle, little Donnie, little Donnie has alienated or has had pejorative things to say about most of the people or people that they respect who he would need to do this. So right now, you have breaking audio from the Cruz campaign about what they're doing with the delegates. Our shenanigans are cheeky and fun. Yeah, I mean, his shenanigans are cruel and tragic. Which makes them not shenanigans at all, really. Evil shenanigans. I- and the Trump campaign is completely flummoxed. So if you think about well, it. Well, and the Trump supporters are completely confused. Oh, no, 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 you know, and, and look, I, I want to make, and again, Stacey and I want to make a big exception. If, you, if you're new to the game and Trump is your guy and you're dispirited and, and you're all pissed off about what we have to say about it, this, this isn't necessarily directed at you. But there are a cadre of supporters of all candidates who are absolutely detestable, miserable, human assbag beings. They really are. They're awful. No, They're awful. absolutely awful. All right? We call the Trump... The, 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 once for Trump. Are you kidding? Uh, Trump kids. But, but hold a on. Trump bar, a Trump, or a Trump Bart, Breitbart <laughs> journalist today said he wanted people in the Never Trump camp to die in a fire. Exactly. But, but this, is, uh. this, is, this, is, this is my whole point. So now listen up, Trumpkins. Listen up, you detestable Trumpkin. Hand off your schmeckle ear on the radio. Now, I would like you to Trump explain this to me. I would like you to Trump explain this to me. Forget about Ann Coulter, a blonde head, crip keeping puppet of a disgrace. Okay? Explain this to me. I will build a wall to keep out all the Mexicans and ban Muslims and America great and Reagan Democrats and, and this, that, and the other. Bombs for, for pissed, Japan. and Pissed yeah. off, disaffected group that you could possibly find. Okay, I'm with you. Politically, it's working, all right? But what is his big thing? He is so big and he is so powerful and he's not beholden to anybody because he is the great exalted Don, 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 little Donnie baby. He goes no, running no, to the GOP establishment, not with the other campaigns. Not with a bunch of congressmen and senators behind him. He goes running hat in hand with closed doors to start complaining and bitch, 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 wah, wah, wah. Listen, I don't care how many 10 billion shekels that you got there, all right, Skippy? It doesn't matter. If you would not, if you would not, you have to believe that the rest of his campaign is as ill-prepared as the candidate was last night it, with Chris Matthews in that town hall. It goes deeper than that, J.D., oh, for me know. personally, okay? Well, you know, that's a lot of their entire Their entire platform for saying Trump is our guy, and this is even some of his, you know, late-to-the-game supporters. He's a great manager. He's going to find the best people. He knows how to run things and let the people who work for him execute and get things done. Well, guess what? He picked a terrible team. He didn't understand the game. He didn't do his due diligence. And if he loses this thing, it's his own fault. (laughs) Not my fault. I I mean, no, I said it's his own fault. We've been telling him. He did not manage his campaign appropriately. You know something that you're not telling us, you slimy scumbag liar. And it goes back to the whole point that we made before. You know, the, the this party, look, whether Trump gets the nominee nomination or doesn't get the nomination. Whether he goes on to be the nominee or he doesn't. Whether he goes on to be the nominee and wins the presidency or he goes on to be the nominee and lose the presidency. If Cruz goes on to get the nomination and win or lose the presidency, it doesn't matter at this point. You have got to be kidding yourself if you think that in November there are going to be solidified, consolidated pieces to pick up. There's not. It's just getting to a point of deciding whether... The rubble and the ashes of where you stand are worth rebuilding 
or whether you're going to turn around and look at other like-minded people and be the last vestiges of, of what's left in this country to understand that there's a constitution, to understand what that means. You know, for those of you who are sci-fi fans, I'm not, I'm a history guy, but if you want to look at it in a sci-fi vein, we're almost getting to the point where, where the rest of us are going up to, the, to, to, to Masada like, like, like the Israelites did and hole up in those caves till we just kind of take what we have and try to defend it to the death. Because what we have right now is a completely viscerally broken party. The only thing we have going for us is that, Uncle Bernie, oh, Mr. Vargas, Mr. Vargas, are you in charge here? The color people are yelling, the color people are yelling. You know what? I need a little speed. Hold on a second. Boom, boom, boom. The one thing that I'm going to punch out, put a smile on everybody's face, just go Google Uncle Bernie and Hillary Clinton. Man, has he become a sand in the Clinton. Oh, look at that. Time for break number two. Closing out the show, coming into the top of the 10 o'clock hour. J.D. and Stacey bringing you some nonsense of the world. I'm sure there's a porn story in there or something from the New York Post. Oh, good Lord, I see something about a hugging couch. I'm going to buy you two, Stacey. Coming back in three minutes. <laughs> Everybody, this is Jason, host of According to Me. I'd like to invite you to check out my show. It's a two-hour show that lasts 60 minutes in... Uh, listen, I hate to interrupt, but uh, one thing I can do is read off a script. Just say, uh, let me be clear a lot. It works. President Obama, I, I, I can handle this. It's a radio promo. I, I'm not green. I've done this before. Did someone say green? Now Al Gore is here. Listen, I'm just trying to record a radio promo. Do you mind? Now, uh, do you say good things about me on the show? <laughs> no, not at all. But if it makes you feel any better, I rip on Republicans just as much. The AM radio frequencies give off very high levels of radiation. Look, my show is on the internet, which you invented. Can I, can I just do my promo? I got a pen. I can veto that, you know. I know you got a pen. It's not a law. It's a radio promo. Listen, listen, just listen to my show. Barack Obama and Al Gore hate it, so you're going to love it. Here's an executive order. Don't listen to a show. He doesn't like me. He's racist. And he doesn't recycle either. That's it. I'm done. It's According to Me, Wednesdays, 10 p.m. Eastern, right here on K98 Talk. Wondering why you're up early with us on a Sunday morning making a cocktail? News lately got you drinking? Hung over from the mainstream media by Sunday? We are, and we got you covered. We sure do. We got your hangover cure for those weekly news blues. So sit back, top off your mimosa, and add some Baileys to that coffee. Take a match to your copy of the New York Times. Light, funny, and oh yeah, news with booze. And a lot of laughter. Welcome to Bloody Marys and Broadsheets. If it's Sunday, it's Bloody Marys and Broadsheets. We're your cure from your weekly news hangover. We will never fully understand what we've asked of our military service members or their families, asking them to put themselves in harm's way, to endure it all. But we do understand that it's our turn, our duty, to keep them secure for the rest of their lives. Wounded Warrior Project long-term support programs help our most severely ill or injured veterans live independently, at no cost, for life, so that they might stand at ease. Join us at findwwp.org. K98 Talk is expanding its lineup for 2015. This means we are expanding our advertising base. Whether you're a startup trying to push through to the next level, or an established business trying to supplement your advertising budget. Web-based advertising is a solid investment. Thanks to Talk's newest partnership with TuneIn Radio and instant access to our sister station, K98FM, we give you worldwide access at a reasonable cost. Interested parties should email us at sales at k98fm.com.
Welcome back to Time Warp Radio, where you take your co-host, you set the clock, you turn it back, you're going forward, and everybody goes, I don't know what's going on. That's right, baby. That's J.D. and Stacy here at Game On, part of that Conservative Commandos Radio Network. On that K98 Talk, all our political freaks, geeks, and back alley sneaks, now you know what to do. Get over to that chat room, K98Talk.org. Say hello to Stacy. Tell Ron to put on some clothes, oi ve schmear. After the show, stick around for the boss, that Ricky Tiggy Tommy Rick Robinson, that America off the rails every Monday through Friday, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, here on k 98 98 Talk tomorrow, 5 p.m. Drive time. Little media market called Philadelphia. Big whoop. Won't fight about it. Oh, yeah. By the way, we lead into Yahoo Sports. Bing on that WNWNWN, JC 1360 AM. Covering also that southern New Jersey, northern Delaware. Speaker.com, hashtag JD and Stacy, J D A N D S T A C E Y. Find out a catalog of everything we've been doing here with that Ricky Ticky Tavi Rick Robinson. Good evening, darling. Well, how's your clock moved in its morning now? <laughs> Yeah, it's just behind, I guess. Well, I, I got with with. with I thought we had another minute, and there was just another point I was going to make. That's why I got confused. Oh, see, you know what? For that, it's all about Stacy. No, uh, it's just really I left people with an inaccurate perception, and I wanted to correct it. Well, well, why don't you do that now? Okay, I did say the RNC said all delegates, according to them, are unbound, as a rule was rescinded in 1980. However, the states do have laws, and while the RNC is not bound to follow them, most of the delegates are political people and want to come back. They're going to follow their state's rules. Most of them are bound in the first round. All right, so for those of you who listen to the replay, just make sure you listen to that before the commercials and the whole second segment will make Yeah, it. then we would – I'm sorry. I just uh, – yeah, I, I know, I know. I'm a minute know. or two off, and I got I confused. Know. She's got a list, and if she doesn't get everything, then we got to do it in the next one. But it's okay. We're used to it at this point. I just um, – I felt like I left it wrong. I, 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 I – okay. So <laughs> – you have, they really want to talk about the hugging have, couch. You have. The, we'll get to the hugging couch. You have. The, oh, derka, derka, derka. Between Paris and everything else. All for the virgin. Okay. So, between that, Brussels, San Bernardino, and France, who, by the way, the, by the way, the French suck. They really do. They they really do. They 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 re- I mean, you want to talk about viva la indifference? So, <laughs> forget the fact that they don't shower. With all the problems and ills in the world and the 700 no-go zones, the first one seven miles outside of, France, of Paris, what happens to Jacques Cousteau over here, Stacey? <laughs> um, are we talking about emojis? Oh, yes. And listen, for those Not only you- that, not only that. Hollande came out uh, yesterday, I believe it was, and said they were not going to restrict... Um, convicted uh, criminals among the refugee population from applying for citizenship. So, yeah. All right. So but, why, don't, why, don't you, why don't you explain what happened to Francois? Well, apparently a 22-year-old French man um, has now been sentenced to a total of six months with three months already served in prison for texting his ex-girlfriend an emoji in the form of a gun. So on your phone, if you scroll through your emojis, you know, there's kissy faces, happy faces, hearts, and all this other stuff. If you get down to the tools section, there's actually a handgun. And most of us use it like as a, oh, geez, like gun to your own head. Like, I can't believe that happened. No, apparently this young man was arguing with his girlfriend, who happened to be a minor at the time, had sent her some other bizarre texts, whoa, but then just decided whoa, whoa, to send whoa, whoa, a gun emoji. Whoa, 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 You know I don't go through these before time. Wait, this story just got interesting. What happened? The girl was a minor? She was a minor at the time it happened. Who is your daddy, and what does he do? But the interesting part about this, J.D., because you don't read the articles, is that not only has someone been jailed and fined in France for texting an emoji, all right, there have been cases in the U.S. of people being arrested and facing charges for sending threatening emojis. In June of last year, police in South Carolina, I think that was the same state that arrested the guy for not returning the video, arrested two men after they sent threatening emojis to con- and considered it to constitute stalking. Hey, what the hell's going on outside the house?
Yo, son, you sending emojis again? Yo, I give up the iPhone. I give up. I give up. They're crazy. He's sending emojis on the phone. I don't know what to do. Oh, Lordy, Lord, Lordy, Lord. If Lordy, you're Lord. mad, Jesus, don't send the emojis that say mean things. Don't send the fists. Uh, don't send the guns. Don't do this. You're going to get arrested. If you're going to send the mean emoji and you know it, shoot yourself. If you're going to send there the mean go. emoji and you're going to do it, shoot yourself. <laughs> If you're gonna send a mean emoji and you really didn't know you're gonna do it, why don't do it? Da, 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 kill you. <laughs> if you're mad, don't drunk emoji. Bad idea. <laughs> if you send a mean emoji and you mean it, shoot yourself. <laughs> <laughs> okay, terrific. Exactly. You can't play that sound effect until you can stop laughing. <laughs> I can't believe I, I I really literally had a pre-kindergarten memory that merged with the song about shooting yourself. <laughs> this is why I would never want like the all these brain technologies we tell people about. I don't ever want to see what's going on inside your brain. Why? There's just, there's just, there's just so much going on. I mean, you get inside my head, and it's like I bring nothing to the table. Okay. Yeah. So because, because, because now, because we have a very sick audience, and they're all worked up about it. Lonely, this chair will hug you back. Is this from a fetish magazine? No, this is it's from South USA Korean today. beaker. You guessed wrong. Oh my God! <laughs> is that why the couch is so small? Is this, I have got to tell you something. All of you Asians out there, especially the ones that are like right off the boat or, or whatever they call the thing, the junk, I, you're crazy when it comes to sex. The Asians are the crazy. Is this a sex thing or is this just a weird little no, Asian No, this is thing? just, this is for lonely people. Why do you got to make it about that? Have you, why? Watch the Vice Land special on Asia and you tell me No. Why. Well, I don't okay. watch, no. Just take my word for it. Mm, you just got to bring it around to that. No, there is nothing like coming home and wrapping yourself in the arms of a loved one or a bizarre looking chair. Oh, see, all right. Now you just made my point for me, okay? No, no, and no, this, no, no, yes, no. Yes, this you young woman, no, South no, Korean no. designer Lee Eun Kyung, created yes. a furry sofa with soft, flexible arms that are meant to give you the <laughs> feeling of being held by a loved one. So the chair just <laughs> hugs you. It doesn't have fingers. It doesn't have anything on it that vibrates. It's just soft. And it envelops you. brought to you by the same people that converted an office robot for some hanky kapanky. Okay? And the ones that have all the weird hentai porn. You can't tell. You know what? I'm I know nothing point. about that. I, I am going. I am going. To, I am going. I am going to make a point to to. Oh, so there's nothing like coming home. Blah, 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 blah. Don't have anyone to hold. It, shouldn't they call this the suicide couch? Because here's the thing: the couch holds you, right? So you kind of feel semi loved. But then all of a sudden, you know, you start. You you, you want to get an answer, and the couch doesn't say anything. Do these come in like 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 artificial intelligence versions, where the couch will like talk you off? No, we couch? can't do artificial intelligence. We talked about that last week. Oh, that's right, because that, that's, that, that's when your, your automated couch is like... It rubs the lotion on its skin. It does yeah. this whenever could it's you cold. Imagine, could you imagine coming home to the creepy Japanese couch? I've had such a long, awful day, and my boyfriend broke up with me, and I lost my job, and, oh, I think I'm just going to get on the Huggy Love Couch. Oh, Huggy Love Couch, you're the only one in the world who understands me. Huggy Love Couch, if you could say anything, what would you say to me? It rubs the lotion on its skin. It does this whenever it's told. Oh, Huggy Love Couch, that's creepy. Are you sure? I'm going to try again. Did you mean that? What the f***ing lotion in the People may not know this because we're such good friends, but I'm like the biggest prude in the world, and I'm just really uncomfortable now. <laughs> Why? With a huggy couch, it wasn't even, that. It wasn't even about prudish. That was about like a weird, creepy horror horror movie type couch. Okay, that's a horror movie type couch. I hate that clip. I've hated that clip forever. <laughs> I hate that movie. I know it's it's one of the feel good movies of the year. Uh, Speaking of sex, <laughs> well, you want to take the feel the burn lot for profit? So. We all like us some Uncle Speedo. Who's been wanting to have 
Boom, boom, boom. <laughs> Those were two sound clips that should have never been played together. Exactly. I'm not sure why that happened. <laughs> Hit the wrong button. I don't have little So we all little know bonnet. Uncle Bernie Sanders. People generally like him. He's got a smile. Even if you agree with nothing he has to say politically, you can't really be too mad at him. His slogan <laughs> is feel the burn. B-E-R-N, short for Bernie Sanders. Oh, well, oh, can you feel it, a not-for-profit <laughs> out in L.A. that provides sexually transmitted disease testing and HIV prevention services has now taken Bernie Sanders' slogan, and on a billboard outside of Los Angeles, it says, feel the burn, B-U-R-N, and underneath it, it says, freestdcheck.org. This is on a <laughs> billboard. I might vote for Speedo. I, I just, you know, I mean, if, if you want to think about, oh, oh, Mr. Vogel, I mean, I mean, think about that. Trump gets elected. We have, we have, we, we, we have like nationalistic ghettos. You live in New camps. York. You have no hope anyway. If Trump gets elected. We get nationalistic like, like internment camps and ghettos. If Uncle Speedo gets elected, uh, uh, I will give out uh, condoms and and uh, uh, really good weed. And free call. I mean, the whole, you know, look, the country would be a mess, but good Lord, would everybody be chill. Speaking about chill, I really did mean it in a creepy horror story kind of way, not a creepy kind of prudish type of way. I didn't mean that. So I don't want to get left behind. Will you still please, baby girl, baby girl, baby girl, throw me those keys? I'll throw them at you. Ah, shut up and get in the car. I'm leaving you here in the cold. Tell the nice people where they can find you. Oh, you can find me and all the people that are really mad at me on Twitter on at Scott Squire, S-C-O-T-S-F-Y-R-E, or on Facebook at Stacey Lennox. And I swear to God, all of you back me up. You're going to find me in the doghouse after this show, and I really didn't mean to do anything. If I'm not in the doghouse, I'm on Game On JD. Alleyways, bulletproof vest. You know somebody's going to take a shot at me. See you Sunday. I'm looking for you, you Occupy freaks, with your glitter bombs. Bring it on! Bring on the glitter. Everything has changed. Everything has changed in the last few years. Conservatives used to take it, and we're not taking it anymore. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com. If you want to work until you keel over, have less of everything in retirement, or give back more of your hard-earned money to the stock market again, then just ignore me. But if you'd like to protect the money you save, receive a steady, predictable retirement income, and enjoy financial security for as long as you live, then listen to this. You can download a free report that reveals the wealth-building secrets Wall Street and the banks don't want you to know. You'll learn how you can get guaranteed growth, safety, and real prosperity without risking your money in the Wall Street casino and how to get the money you need when you need it simply by asking for it. This is the best way to have a 100% secure retirement and know your money will last as long as you do. To learn more about this method and to get your free report, go to 29security.com. That's the number 29security.com. 29security.com. Go to 29security.com. That's not how it works. That's not how any of this works.